Hello and welcome to the Fireside Chat. I'm Kalpana Singhal, Editor-in-Chief CXO TV. And today we have Mr. Sachin Gupta, President and Chief Information and Innovation Officer, Usha International as our guest today. He has more than 33 years total work experience in information technology, strategy, as well as hotel and restaurant management and handles multiple roles at consumer electronics giant. His current focus areas are defining and implementing IT strategy and digital transformation across the value chain. Welcome, Mr. Gupta. Thank you, Gopna. Thanks, everyone. Nice to be here. So, uh, Mr. Gupta, what fascinated you towards picking technology as your career? <laughs> Funny that you asked me that question. Gopna, I've been asked that question, I guess, uh, at every interview, and uh, a, lot, a lot of people have asked me that. Okay. Uh, and it, it didn't happen by design, it have, for me, it happened by choice. I moved to US in 89 uh, to pursue masters uh, and realized that I had to go through uh, uh, hotel management because in India it was three years rather than four years. So I had to get more units or credits for a bachelor's degree in US. So went to the college, uh, the person there who was helping wasn't very supportive. Uh, so landed up getting a computer on my own, self-taught with somebody's help, and kind of sort of started liking it, uh, moved forward, then got an MBA. And as I was getting that, realized, got interested more and more, was one day handed down, I was working on the computer and the GM said, you know computers? And I said, you know, I can figure out my way. So he uh, handed over the entire IT in the hotel to me. And that was kind of, way to move forward. Um, then I was doing MBA followed. After that, I did masters in information systems and uh, then uh, MCSE, Oracle DBA, CCNA track and kind of sort of then moved uh, from hotel operations into hotel IT and then out of hotels into mainstream IT. Uh, what made me successful or, or different was I used to say at that time, uh, when people used to say companies exist because of IT, I used to say, no, IT is a service provider and it's vice versa. A lot of people used to laugh at me, but that's how I ran the departments and kind of sort of went along um, and uh, moved back to India in 2005 with Microsoft and the rest they say is history. So that's how the transformation happened. Yeah, so that was really nice. Uh, so you have spent more than three decades in information technology, strategy, and hotels and restaurant management. So please tell us about your journey so far. Very challenging, opportunistic, and satisfying. And the, in, in journey, I've, I've spent a lot of time in US and then in India gave me a lot of global perspective on various things. I worked in very large organizations, Fortune 10 to uh, non-profit organizations, very small, which has given me a large span of, of the way uh, things happen uh, in terms of culture, speed, thought process, and so on and so forth. It's been a lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of learnings in the journey, uh, and especially um, moving from um, I'm probably one of the very few CIOs, at least in India, uh, if not globally, that have also managed PL, have been on the revenue side and also on the cost side. So I was part while I was in Microsoft, I was part of I used to run consulting services as a part of Microsoft Services team, did that for five years, which was very different to work on a on a vendor side, but it ta taught me a lot about p &L, projects, project management, got me to work with multitudes of stakeholders, the large corporations in India, um, plus got my hands dirty very quickly in a lot of technologies, so, and building strategies. So that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, so from hotels to IT, back to revenue side, and then back to IT, it's, it's can't complain. It's been a lot of learning experience, a lot of fun. Uh, quite interesting. <laughs> okay, so what are the current industry trends? Why it has become imperative for organizations to become digital? 
I think um, the digitalization or digitization, as we call it, started a while back. Um, I remember uh, we used to do a lot of digitization while, while I was in Microsoft, but it was never called digitization. People used to call it automation or, or taking things and automating them. The real so the the focus on it started about six years ago. Uh, what uh, and the companies started doing it, um, and I saw that uh, in my previous jobs as well. But what gave it a push was I think pandemic. What happened uh, in last two years? Companies, uh, organizations very quickly realized, all size organizations, that uh, it would be very difficult. Uh, to work uh, in older models and digitization has to happen across the value chain. And I think that's what gave it a huge push. Uh, the other thing that, the wonderful thing that happened that I often talk about, the adoption uh, happened of technology happened super fast. Um, now people accept the technology and the solutions much willingly and and uh, and openly than they did before. So that was another change that had happened. Yeah. So digitalization uh, has increased the number of uh, data sources, according to you. How enterprises can best leverage the data for improving business performance? I think we've all heard at one point data was new oil. We're now saying data is new currency for the organization. And there are multiple other uh, sayings about that. In data, uh, with digitization or digitalization, uh, the, the, the sources of data has considerably increased. The data input and the size and the amount of data created has significantly increased, which has created an, not an issue, but an opportunity in itself. So for a data strategy, um, the consolidation of data needs to happen. Um, there needs to be appropriate data masters that are set up. Um, the data taxonomy becomes very critical. So everybody in the organization start talking about it. And then comes, how do you generate value from that data? And so once you have the base ready, that's when you start looking at the value generation, uh, which could be done from, uh, from creating dashboards and insights into it. Then once you create dashboards, then you have a journey of moving from descriptive dashboard to predictive, to prescriptive dashboards. Then you start, you can put, uh, use technologies like AI and ML now on top of it to generate business insights and be able to provide that insights uh, at the right time for the business to make a decision or or provide a decision to them that, that they can take and go forward and, and look at. So uh, when done right, um, there, there's a lot of value add that can happen to the business. But with that, uh, there's also a, a challenge that we're we're seeing. Uh, security is becoming a huge concern. Um, things like where the data is kept, how often it is backed up, where how do we secure it, how do we keep keep that data consistent? Right, that's yeah. a challenge. Now with privacy bill uh, that might come up. Uh, that privacy is going to become an issue. So things like whether the data is kept encrypted, what kind of data can you kept, keep depending on what kind of a business you are in and so on and so forth, that's going to um, become important. But um, uh, I don't deny that the data is growing and that growth of data also brings humongous opportunity for organizations to yeah. take insights from it and, and, and go forward. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So uh, while planning any technology initiative, what capabilities you consider like that enable you selecting the right technology vendor and uh, solution provider for executing your project? Uh, Kapna, I think the biggest thing a person needs to understand or keep in mind or what I keep in mind is to make sure that the vendor that uh, that is that it's being evaluated for the for the te for the technology un understands the technology very well or solution very well has a solution that has been used previously 
would understand our requirement of organization's requirement well. There's some longevity of the time um, and how they're going to be able to implement that solution to, to provide us support. Sometimes, a lot of times, it becomes very critical, critical to also understand what is uh, partner's uh, skin in the whole project, right? A lot of times, just buying the technology doesn't help. You have to use it as a solution, and they being able to provide that solution to the organization to be able to implement it becomes important. Uh, it's become a lot easier now with uh, a lot of solutions available as as software as a service, rather than it was before where it was longer time it took to evaluate. But uh, my my principles say, if there is a solution available or technology set available, which can uh, provide, which can cover 80% of your requirements, then it's better to go with that rather than custom build it. So I've always used that and it's worked so far. Yeah. So at the same time, you know, once we execute the project, then, we need our teams to actually, uh, you know, get sync into the system using the IT. So with the digitalization, there's a, uh, you know, huge skill gap. So according to you, how business executives can address this challenge to become digital champion in their organization? The skill gap can be addressed in multiple ways, right? You can outsource the work to a company, you can bring in uh, uh, contractors or consultants to help you out with the with a certain amount of project. So the way I've always looked at is you have to have a minimum base of employees and then everything else can be augmented through contractors or completely outsourcing the work or a project to, to, a, to a vendor or a partner. Mm -hmm. And that really, really goes a long way. What what you have to really keep in mind is, or or keep in perspective, is the knowledge transfer that needs to happen at the closure of the project between the partner and then the internal IT, which sometimes is missed and, and then you realize later on as you start getting into things. So that complete knowledge transfer, including documentation, processes, technology, understanding is important. As long as that, ha that happens, I don't see why uh, they should be an issue. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, lastly, what is your advice or message you would like to give to new budding CIOs? But I, I think what I would say uh, to the CIOs is that they need to invest time to understand the business, right? Of what is important to the business, what is business doing? Mm -hmm. um, I've worked for, I have made sure that I've worked for different verticals across in my career, uh, which which gave me a, a, an opportunity to understand businesses which were very different. Um, so uh, as long as you understand the business, you're able to understand the value the, the, that, uh, that you can provide uh, to the business, whether it's to enhance the revenue or, or uh, lower the cost which becomes important. So focus on that, I'd say one. Second, I would, I would say if you, if you fail, you need to fail fast, right? And learn from it and move on. Um, so very similar to that is um, that you need to, to let go. Um, uh, I understand a lot of times we've put in a lot of efforts, uh, blood and sweat and building something and then you just keep clinging on to it if it, even if it is not working so you need to know to cut the cotton if you do uh, move on learn from it and keep going the yeah. third uh, that i would say the third important thing would be uh, to delegate uh, you need to there's a there's a, uh, a huge saying that uh, if you show, uh, if you give a fish to somebody, you feed them for a day. If you show them how to fish, you you've uh, given them, uh, or you fed them for the lifetime, right? So yeah. you need to you need to get going. You need to make sure that people are ready to take on, and then train them if need to be, give them the tools if needed, and then uh, you need to uh, um, uh, start delegating, which will only, not only help them grow, but also you to be able to do 
multiple projects at the same time, multiple things at the same time, um, and and go from there. So um, a lot of us want to do it, uh, and well, we feel short. Um, but doing once you learn how to do it, there's nothing better than that. Uh, then you're contributing to the entire organization's growth and moving things, uh, helping move things forward. So that's what the three things I would say are critical. Yeah, absolutely. So that that's what actually uh, you know the leaders are all about. How <laughs> how you actually help others to grow along with you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Kapra. Yeah. So thank you, Mr. Gupta. It was a complete pleasure interacting with you today. And yeah. I'm sure uh, CXO TV audience would appreciate the best practices and valuable insights yeah. you shared today. Great. Thank you. And thanks for having me. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for thank listening. You. With this, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Please follow hashtag CXO TV and stay tuned to our social media channels for more updates. Stay safe and take care. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.